The Devil May Cry franchise was definitely in an interesting place in the early 2010s. After the release of Devil May Cry 3 in 2005, the fans were excited to see what was next for Dante. Devil May Cry 1 takes place afterwards and left us with a few story mysteries. What happened to Virgil after we defeated him? Will Mundus come back? These questions would be answered in 2008 with the release of DMC4, which had a mixed reception at release, with many unsure about what seemed to be the new main character Nero, and numerous complaints about Dante playing back through all the levels you played through as Nero. Capcom was also in an interesting spot of sourcing out many of their lesser known IPs to western developers to... negative results. This eventually led to Capcom sourcing out one of their iconic IPs to Ninja Theory. Their last hack and slash was Heavenly Sword, which was praised for its combat. So, surely the DMC franchise is in good hands with them, right? Not in a million years. Oh dear. DMC Devil May Cry is a fucking stupid title. Devil May Cry, Devil May Cry? That's like calling this channel Roscoe M Studios, Roscoe M. It's just redundant. Although, at least it doesn't do the thing that most remakes slash reboots do, where they give the same name, forcing people to put a year on the end of it. Prey 2017, Sonic 2006, God of War 2018, you get the idea. People over the years in the Devil May Cry community, and even the gaming community at large, have given this game the label of worst game ever made. And while it's not great, I don't think it deserves that title. It's not god awful, and I genuinely believe that this game is perfectly fine, even enjoyable. A lot of the backlash to this game, I feel, is really undeserved. People didn't like the changed up combat, making it more accessible than previous entries, the story, the character designs, and honestly most things about the game. But today, I'm going to be making my way through Limbo to tell you why DMC Devil May Cry surprised me. First thing is the world the game takes place in. It's certainly different to what we're used to, but I kind of get what it's going for. The previous DMC games are set in a grounded fantasy world where people use magic and technology in tandem with one another to live their lives, and most of the world knows that demons exist or existed with them worshipping the demon Sparda. Dante is the half-son of Sparda, which allows him to have the powers that he does. DMC is set in a world where demons are fully in control and rule over the world with an iron fist, led by the demon king Mundus. He has humanity in a grip that they can never escape, as he has killed the only two people who could defeat him, Sparda and his wife, Eva. This is where our protagonist comes in, as he is once again one of the sons of Sparda, but this time there's a slight difference. He's not half demon, half human like previous games. He is half demon, half angel. A Nephilim, as the game calls him. There is a prophecy that only Nephilim can defeat the demon king, and, with Virgil helping us rediscover our past, he and Dante spend the game trying to get to Mundus to kill him with the help of their human companion, Cat. From that, let's talk about Dante, or Dante, as he's been dubbed by the community. People hate that Dante has been turned from someone who's cocky but always with his heart in the right place. How's that for Road Rash? To I'm your prime date, you ugly sack of shit. That. He drinks, swears, has no regard for anyone else but himself, and is generally unlikable, but I think that was the point. He's supposed to be incredibly unlikable at the start of the game as he goes through an arc. He slowly bonds with Kat, and she, along with Virgil, show him that he doesn't have to be an asshole and alone. He can have friends and people that he cares about. And by the end of the game, Dante is perfectly willing to throw down his own life to save humanity. He even has more compassion than Virgil. When Kat gets kidnapped, Virgil is willing to let her die, but it's Dante who insists on saving her, and at the end of the game, gives her the credit she deserves for helping them get anywhere close to Mundus. I understand that having an unlikable main character is annoying, as you need to spend the whole game with him, but Dante does change, and I feel that people don't acknowledge that enough when talking about this game. I actually question if some of the people who bash this game online have even played it, or if they're just going by popular consensus. The combat is an hour talking point that gets brought up a lot. I personally really liked it. The combat is made simpler, but I don't think this is a bad thing. 
Some of the moves in previous games I found have awkward button combinations, making me less likely to use those moves. The upward launch, for example, being mapped to R1 plus triangle and then pulling back the stick in the opposite direction to the enemy. In DMC Devil May Cry, that's just mapped to circle. Delayed combos make a comeback, as well as stinger, although it does have a slightly different input. You have to push the stick forward twice and then hit the attack button. It's a weird input and doesn't often fit in well in a combo, but I used it to start combos and that made the input a little less weird. Lock-on has been removed, which I actually did find a little bit annoying. An evade is mapped to R1. Dante also gains a hook, which is mapped to either L2 or R2 plus square. Which trigger you hold down will change the effect of the hook, either pulling you to the enemy or the enemy to you. Unlike previous games of the series, I actually used the alternate weapons a ton, mainly because none of them replace other weapons. You always have Rebellion and Ebony and Ivory, but with taps on the D-pad you can change out your Angel and Demon weapons as well as firearms at any time. Osiris was my favourite to use with click slashes and an awesome attack that sends enemies upwards while you spin it around to deal massive damage. Arbiter I liked a lot, but due to the slower attacks I only used it for shields or red demon enemies. Aquila was extremely helpful for massive damage and crowd control along with one of the boss fights in particular, and Erix which I used the least due to the attacks not having a wide radius being fists. However, I used all of them at some point throughout my playthrough because the game actively encourages switching weapons on the fly and even mid-combo. Firearms are a shotgun which I hardly used and Kablooey which wasn't that good. So the guns were a bit of a letdown though. Another letdown is Devil Trigger. I like the visual of the world turning white and Dante turning bright red with white hair but the enemies being launched into the air and the amount of time it lasts, I'm not much of a fan. DT barely even lasts a minute and with the enemies all being in the air means your combos while in DT are limited. What I like about this system is its similarity to the web swing in Spider-Man, with its simplicity leading to complexity, if that makes any sense. The button inputs themselves have been simplified, but the ability to switch weapons so effortlessly by holding the triggers and pressing the same attack sequences, along with occasionally pressing the D-pad to change your assigned angel and demon weapons, adds a level of complexity in varying up your combos to max out the style meter. This system allows you to pull off some seriously awesome combos once you master the mechanics, while being simple enough that players who don't quite master it can get through the game, but they won't be as efficient or stylish. I do like the idea and execution of Limbo, having two worlds that run alongside one another and having characters pass between them. The real world is very grey, boring and what you think of when you think of 7th gen Unreal Engine, but Limbo is the total opposite, with bright colours and some great shifting level design. The parts in the early game where Dante goes into his own mind to unlock chains from a statue I found a little repetitive, but other than that I thought the game's pacing was fantastic and always kept moving. I never found there was a point where the gameplay or story was brought to a screeching halt like in DMC3, with my playthrough still lasting me a good seven and a half hours. This game is broken down into 20 missions and, once again, unlike previous games, I actually felt that the gaps between missions were put in good places that covered time changes or there were good bookends on one idea that the next level could then move on to another. The bosses were certainly interesting this time around, but like all DMC games, were a highlight. Except him. The Demon Hunter is a good first encounter, but on the whole, a little too easy. I mean, I managed to stagger him in seconds. The Succubus was certainly interesting and spawned this famous interaction. My name, by the way, is Dante. But you can call me Dante the Demon Killer. Has a nice ring to it, don't you think? You want to kill me? You can't kill me? I'm 1200 years old! You don't look a day over 12,000. Fuck you! Fuck you! Fuck you! <laughs> the attack swung a lot wider and the fight also involved a bit of platforming when she covered the area in sick. She also had multiple stages of her health bar which will come back in later fights. She gets a particularly brutal end which I wouldn't wish upon anyone. Boss 3 is Bob Bardis and his fight I thought was fantastic 
with you dodging different coloured lasers while staggering him to attack his massive head in the middle of the arena. I also like that grunt battles in between stages of the fight were shot like new segments from a helicopter. Just a cool detail. Boss 4 was the most disgusting, as we're fighting Mundus' spawn, so it would push out the mother so we could attack her, and do that multiple times with no changes to attack patterns until she's defeated. Not much I can really say on this one, it's a bit boring. Our penultimate boss was Mundus, as he takes the form of buildings and cars and bits of street to become a kaiju sized super monster with massive attacks. You have to stun him to pull out his eyes before beating the shit out of the human form inside this massive rubble. The fight isn't overly engaging mechanically, but I'll forgive that for the sheer spectacle of it. The final boss, however, was a fucking piss take. Virgil is the most challenging and most bullshit boss I've ever gone up against. His attacks are so incredibly quick that while I'm dodging one, I've moved into the path of another. He spawns this dumbass clone that repeats his moves so he now does twice as much damage if he hits you and the fucker can parry all of your attacks with all of your weapons whenever he feels like it. Sometimes he gets hit, sometimes he doesn't. But the part that takes the biscuit is that he pulls a form of devil trigger when he's only one hit away that his clone can stop you hitting him at all while he generates nearly half of his health bar. How do you counter this? By using Devil Trigger and hitting him once. Did the game tell me that was the solution? Did it fuck? I was stuck on this fight for about 15 minutes trying to figure out what the fuck I was supposed to do before having to look it up online to see the one part of the puzzle that the game hadn't told me about. That isn't good boss design, that's bullshit. If I can't beat a boss, I would like to know it's because I've not honed my skills enough to rise to the challenge, not because the game left out a few details on how to beat it. I eventually got to a point in the fight that he'd regenerated three times and was parrying every attack I threw. He also never uses this move in the rest of the fight, meaning that you could maybe learn to counter it before nearly beating him. It just comes from nowhere at the end. The other complaint I have about Virgil is more from a writing perspective. I can't buy that he's the leader of a human resistance when he's this much of an asshole to the people around him. Added on to that fact is that he just suddenly flips his dick switch at the very end with no build up to him wanting to take over the world. There's the tiniest of hints, but really not enough to set up an ending twist around. He's also just completely not interested in actually helping any of the humans. When his base of operations is raided, he doesn't care that all of the people who have helped him get to where he is are dying around him, including Kat. Dante is more compassionate than this asshat. Also, there's the scene that everyone who's seen this game knew was coming. Virgil shoots Mundus's child. This seems like an attempt to be controversial for the sake of it to me. Kinda like when Modern Warfare 2 put in no Russian to generate headlines. There are so many other ways they could have written that game to end up at the same place, and they threw in a controversy for the sake of it. That's what this scene with Virgil kinda feels like. The other complaint I have with the writing is its awful treatment of women. Every woman in the game, and I mean every woman, is called a whore or something similarly degrading. It's a part of the game that I feel was out of date even upon release. There's no reason for it. It doesn't enhance the world, it doesn't enhance the story. It feels like it's there to appeal to a 13 year old's worldview, and it just adds to people opinions that this game is just a painful attempt to be edgy and cool, but it just makes the game uncomfortable and frankly insulting. Back on the positive, however, this game has a pretty good soundtrack. It goes for a punk, electronic kind of vibe. I don't know, I don't really know music genres, and I definitely dig whatever it's going for. Here are some samples of music throughout the game. The story of the game is something that I have barely touched on because it isn't overly interesting. It's the story of Dante going from asshole to protector and meeting Virgil and Cat along the way on a quest to take down the Demon King Mundus and free humanity. There's a few interesting things that get brought up in between but the overarching plot can be boiled down to what I just described. I enjoy all the small moments in here like Dante teaching Cat how to not look like she's resisting arrest 
or Dante and Virgil arguing about saving her. But I will say that it is the game's weakest aspect. What I've been describing this whole time is the base game that was released in 2013, but there was a definitive edition released for consoles in 2015 that boasted many improvements, including a mode that adds a lock-on, makes DT act more like it did in older games, and sets certain moves back to previous controls. I can't play this, however, since it wasn't released on PC, so we're stuck with the base game without said improvements. The game also had DLC, one of which is multiple costumes. There are some really nice costumes in here, with Neo Dante being one of my favourites. The second DLC is, for once, in the Devil May Cry series, a story expansion. This one follows Virgil after the events of the main game as he struggles through his own mental battle. He makes his way through Limbo, encountering visions of Cat, Dante and his mother, killing Cat and Dante and leaving his mother in tears over the death of one of her children. He also fights a hollow version of himself, which was actually a really cool fight. It was super satisfying to know the moves the boss was going to make and using similar moves to smack him right back and combo the shit out of him. I wasn't much of a fan of how Virgil played. He didn't have as many combos as even base Dante and it was a bit of a letdown after his fight in the main game. Playing as him here doesn't feel as good. He feels really stiff in comparison to Dante's flow and doesn't even have a double jump by default. His combos never seem to carry any momentum to lead to another move. His moves were more single moves that have a complete start and end with nothing else going on. Plus many of his moves have insane knockbacks so every time I hit an enemy with a combo I would have to use the swords to teleport towards them which made every encounter feel samey. I also wasn't a massive fan of the level design. When Dante came through Limbo it had massive arenas that you would fight in and then interesting streets and alleys in between but Virgil just has constant platforming and it gets old real quick, especially without the double jump. And occasionally when I would finish a fight I would die since I ended up a mile away from the solid ground and couldn't jump back. This DLC also introduces a few new enemies, Wisps and the Imprisoner. These enemies feel really gimmicky as the Wisp is invisible until you hit them with one summon sword and then you can attack them and the Imprisoner just does a lot of damage with a big health bar. The cutscenes are also super inconsistent as the main ones go for this rough comic book design and mid-mission are done in-engine. I think they should have stuck with in-engine as it would have made it more consistent with the main game, but it also makes the DLC different, so it kind of evens out. That's all I really have to say about DMC Devil May Cry, a game that, despite its flaws, I really enjoyed my time with. I like the darker take on the DMC franchise and I would actually like to see this world return, but given this game's reputation, that probably won't happen, and Ninja Theory have moved on to other things. So, I will leave you all here in limbo for now, and take my leave. I'll see you next time. Bye!